Hey everyone, and welcome back to part two of the um, custom user interface uh, in Articulate Storyline 360 tutorial. So if you haven't seen the first uh, tutorial, I'll link it down below. But uh, otherwise, I'm just going to give you a quick demo uh, for those who haven't seen the, the part one, and then we'll go into actually programming. So basically what this is, is a custom player. So we've got a menu, help uh, print, progress meter, closed captions, previous and next, and play pause. So we can navigate through our slides, the progress meter works, the closed captions work, all the audio works, um, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's flip over to Articulate Storyline. Okay, so in the previous uh, video, I showed you how to make sure that the buttons that we use, which we're going to be placing on the Slide Master. Um, so I showed you that to make a button from Articulate work properly, especially if it's a button that contains a group of shapes, uh, you want to, in the normal state, paste a um, just a, a little square, a shape over it, and put it at a 99% opacity. Um, that will allow you to be able to click it, but it will not uh, prevent clicking in all of the white space within the icon. Okay, so the first thing I, I want us to actually do is go to the player properties. And right now we've got the storyline basic um, player on. So we're going to go into player properties and we're going to change that to make it kind of match everything that we need to match. So we're going to turn off all of our menu items here. Title, volume, captions, we don't need any of this. And then in color and effects, we which if you're not in the classic mode, just toggle to classic, that's where we'll need to be. Then click color and effects. And what we're going to do is show advanced color editing, which appears below the default drop down. Click on that. And then we are going to select the edit item drop down and do base. And we want to do the main background. We're going to change the top and bottom to the sixth from the left, if I couldn't get any more complicated. So we've got three, six. So it's going to be this uh, last blue shade before we get into the greens. And you're going to do that for the top and the bottom. And then from the edit item, we're going to select base and then main border. And we're going to make that the same blue color. All right, so now we have the player customized to what we what we need it to be so that it doesn't show the defaults. We're going to click OK. And now we're going to start programming the actual elements on the Slide Master. So go to View, Slide Master, go up to your, uh, your clean base layer. And so the way that a Slide Master works is that when called upon, any layers in the Slide Master will kind of appear on top of all of your slides. So that's how we get the effect of this control panel appearing on top of the slides without having it actually on any of the slides. So let's go back and look at that. What I want you to do is first select the control layer this is where I've placed all of our um, icons. We've got our where our progress meter is going to go. We've got um, the all of your buttons and the menu. And so the first thing that we need to do here is we need to, on the clean layer, add a trigger that calls that layer. So we want to show layer. And then we want to show the control layer. 
when the timeline starts, and then the object is this slide. Click OK. So now we have a trigger that's telling our control layer to actually present itself. So now what we want to do is we want to program our control, our control bar. So click on your control layer, and then for your hamburger icon, this is going to be your menu. We are going to select the menu icon. It's easier to grab these from the timeline. So we're going to select that, create a new trigger, show layer, menu. When the user clicks, the object menu. Okay. For help, we're going to do the same. Uh, we're going to just leave the, uh, the print button for a moment and we'll do the previous and next. So show layer, or uh, sorry, jump to slide, next slide when the user clicks, we'll do previous, jump to the previous slide when the user clicks previous. Then we can move on to our play pause functionality. So this one's going to be a little long winded. Um, you are going to uh, create some variables first. So we're going to go into our manage project variables. First, we need a true false variable, which is going to act as our toggle. So create a new variable. I'm going to call this toggle play. It's going to be a true uh, false variable and the default will be true. Then click OK. And then, OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to program our play pause um, trigger. So we need to create three triggers, I believe. The first trigger is going to just be the toggle. So what we're going to do to achieve the toggle is add a trigger that says adjust variable. Toggle play pause is selected by default because that's the only variable we have. And you're going to choose set and change it to toggle. And when the user clicks, play pause. Okay. Then we need two triggers. One is going to be that it changes to the play icon. One's going to be that it changes to the pause icon. And then there will be some um, finagling to get the audio to, to work properly. Now we're going to create a new trigger that says change state of play pause. And it's going to be to play when the user clicks, if toggle play, so we need to add a condition, if the variable toggle play is equal to false. Perfect. Then we need to do the same. Uh, and so what you can do to speed this up is copy the selected trigger, paste it, and then we can just edit it. So you're changing play pause to normal, which is the other, our default state. When the user clicks, if toggle play is equal to a value of true. Okay. So now that your toggle has been created, we just need to program the actual behavior of the play pause button. So we're going to go back to our clean layer, which is the base layer, and you're going to create a new trigger and the action is going to be pause timeline on this slide when variable changes toggle play if the variable toggle play is equal to false. Then we're going to add another trigger that says resume timeline this slide, when the variable changes, toggle play, if toggle play is equal to a value of true. And then we're going to click OK. So now we have a functioning play pause icon so that when you preview your slide, let's just move to the next slide here. You can hear your audio. 
And so if you come back to part three of this demo, we will be discussing getting your progress meter to work properly, getting your menu to work properly, the, the print behavior, as well as being able to toggle your closed captions on and off. So stay tuned.